Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Mag Runner Dark Pulse by Studio 3AM Games. Uh, this is a first person puzzle platformer action type game. Uh, essentially, quickest way to sum this up for, and I do hate distilling games down to such basic components like this, but picture uh, Portal 2 but with magnets. And, and this is a big and, uh, and this is not spoiler material or anything, they're very unapologetic about putting this information forward from what I can tell in their marketing. Uh, the big twist is that we are essentially going to be using technology to confront the Cthulhu Mythos, or Cthulhu Mythos, I know I've said that a number of ways in the past. Uh, so essentially there is a little bit of an HP Lovecraftian twist uh, mixed in with what looks to be a pretty straightforward futuristic style game. Uh, we're going to be solving puzzles, we're going to be playing with magnetism, we're going to be looking at all sorts of weirdness uh, as things go forward, and I'm not going to get to that point in the game in the video, uh, but rest assured there is some horror stuff strewn in uh, later on, I think roughly around halfway through the game or so. Uh, so let us run through the options real quick just so we can see what's available here. We've got a how to play option. Uh, pretty simple stuff. One thing I do want to point is a little strange to me. Objects polarized with the same color will attract each other. I always thought it was opposites attract, not same. Uh, so we're going opposite of our normal conventional logic with that. Uh, we can use our left and right mouse button to charge things with red or green magnetism, respectively. We can view magnetic fields with the F key, which is actually a pretty cool function, so you see where they intersect. We've got our standard WASD move around controls. We've got zoom on Q, pick up objects on E and jump on spacebar. I think other than that, that's about it. So, uh, show off our video options. A, a kind of a cool feature that I noticed a few times in here, There's a, you can change your magnetic colors uh, to either red or green or red or like cobalt or purple. I can't quite tell if you know, it's more purple than blue. Uh, and then you can also change your crosshairs. So if you want the straight up like portal look, I guess that's what you can have. Or you could go for a number of quake infused looking crosshairs. I'm going to stick with the standard default here. We've got our uh, audio options, we've got video options, control options, all that good stuff. Alright, so I think that's everything we need to see. There is also a special menu here, Hall of Fame, credits, more games, write us achievements. Uh, that's going to do it. So let us look at the actual game. How about that? So I'm going to run a pretty lengthy cutscene actually. Uh, I might include an annotation if you want to skip past that, but it's nice to get the framing on the story because I think it's uh, quite central to the gameplay of this from what I've seen. So I will catch you after that. I am Gamachi, mutant, inventor, scientist, for you to understand. I need to start at the beginning. In the 21st century, the Glukersberg Corporation rose to a position of world dominance. By 2035, their LifeNet total existence network had linked billions of people across the globe, encompassing social, economic, government, private and public services within one monstrous, ever-evolving system. With LifeNet and the Corporation's vast financial resources, Glukersber accomplished what governments could only hope for. A worldwide populace that wanted to conform, and that was willing to sacrifice privacy for security, safety, and interaction. The CEO, Kram Glukersber, pooled tens of thousands of scientists together to find a new source of free energy to be used for space exploration. The result? was magnetic technology. Glukersberg's space program would be a three-month test of not only magtech, but also citizen explorers, astronauts chosen from the populace. After worldwide selection trials that tested the applicants' athletic capabilities and knowledge of mathematics, physics, and psychology, seven candidates were chosen to enter Glukersberg's training facility. These seven, selected from scientists, athletes, and civilians, would take Glukersberg's technology to the stars. Glukersberg called them his magrunners. A 500,000 square foot training facility filled with puzzles and physical obstacles was built over the San Andreas Rift. The world watched and waited. 
This young man is Dax Seaward. Dax's father, like me, was an expert in genetics and cybernetics. One of the few who had no compunctions about working with a mutant. James and his wife Lavinia became my closest friends. When the accident happened, Dax was left in my care. I raised the boy the best I could, and he soon began to show signs of his father's brilliance. Dax had an aptitude for robotics, genetics, engineering. He read everything he could about Grukusburg's magtech and began to apply the same principles to creating his own technology. By the time he was 11, he had started his own business, repairing and creating new devices. By the time he was 15, he had built and programmed the Newton prototype, a one-of-a-kind electromorph robot. So I suppose that I shouldn't have been surprised when he told me on his 23rd birthday that he wanted to apply for the Krukusberg Magtech program. He had the skills, and he had the brain for it. As we completed work on his custom maglove, I knew he was ready. Alright, so there we go. There's your setup. I thought that was a little bit long, actually, but, you know, on the other hand, it does set up the story pretty nicely. There's some uh, lovely art style to the cutscene. I thought that was nice. Uh, and so, actually, what we're met with is actually sort of more of an in-game cutscene, so I will uh, probably talk over this one. But there are subtitles at the bottom in case you want to read along. Uh, this is your fairly generic, like, okay, we're here, and we're going to talk about what's actually going on. So let's take a look around. I guess we're growing some tomatoes here, uh, vertically. And you'll notice occasionally they drop off, and I'm not sure where they're supposed to be going. Oh, I guess they're harvesting them along this little conveyor belt. It's kind of a cute little touch. They certainly grow pretty fast. Alright, so we're going to hear a word from Xander Deverin. Hologram dude. During training periods, contestants will find They're their real big on these tomato things, aren't they? We will see what they can accomplish individually and later what they are capable of as a group. Be sure to stay online to see History in the Making, brought to you by the same minds responsible for the life. It's like the same future style as like the Hunger Games or something. I noticed everybody had a really silly haircut. <laughs> it's almost showtime. Ready for this? I'm nervous, Kamaji. I made it here. Now the real training starts. The Mag Runners training will be the most important three months. Why do they keep flickering in and out between different people? Skills and wits against the brilliant Mag Tech engineer Xander Deboran, who will evaluate their progress. We've been allowed into the facility for the first 24 hours, and we're bringing it to you live via LifeNet. Don't be nervous, Dax. Stay focused. And remember why you're here. Newton and I will be following on the life net. He says good luck. No, Gamaji. We're talking about going into space if I pass the training. It's hard to believe. If your parents were here... I Is it in his butt? <laughs> be sure to test out the new maglev before you start. I'd like to start. Yeah, I'm quite ready. Good luck, Dax. Jeez, what is up with this hologram thing? He's just like shooting between different people. And let's load. Alright, here we go. First room. So now we can actually. Oh, no, we gotta talk more. Alright, so we can use our left and right, right mouse buttons to fire alternate polarities from the mag glove. Yep, I get the idea. So we want to charge those opposite, because opposite repels. Then we can pick up objects, and I guess put them over here. It's a little indent for them, it seems. Just want to take a quick look around and get a lay of the lands here. Actually, the aesthetic of this reminds me a little bit of Sanctum 2. It's this, like, plasticky future where everything's, like, got round beveled edges and... Uh, there's a lot of 
bright blue and silver and orange for some reason they seem to want to go with that color scheme in a lot of futuristic things I don't know it kind of looks a little bit like a, a child's playroom at some points but other times it looks pretty serious and like they've got these generic light beams shooting around and stuff um, no I, I think it probably is more good than bad it's just uh, you know fairly obvious I guess to go in this sort of a route uh, there's some lovely little texturized bits on the floor that we can use to keep our composure, I suppose, so we don't slip. Although they only seem to be in certain places, so I guess there's some very complicated science stuff going on uh, with the floor there. So what we want to do, I guess, is hit one of these blocks up into that sphere for some reason. Uh, so opposites, attract, or yeah, repel, so that's what we want to do. And that should give you an idea uh, what the magnetic fields look like. They actually look a little bit like... One of those ball things where you can put your fingers on the outside of the glass and it attracts the little lightning bolts over to it, or maybe uh, a Metroid or something. That could be kind of cool. Now what happens if I like pick up one of these and want to take it with me? Is there... Oh, okay, we've got that field just like in Portal 2. There are two types of magnetic fields, cylindrical and spherical. And it looks like we've reached the end of that test chamber, so let's take the elevator down again. Brought to you live by LifeNet. That wasn't so bad, Gamachi. How are the other mag runners doing? Okay, if any of the other mag runners couldn't handle that challenge, they definitely uh, aren't going to do very well. I have a feeling this type of a setup is going to result in some very, very challenging puzzles. I'm not too cool with the like constant loading, though, but I guess it makes sense in the scheme of things. It's just at the beginning, uh, they're paced a little silly. How did Xander develop this stuff? Just focus on your training. I'm going to limit our transmissions to the elevators between levels. That sounds like a good call, man. There's less interference. Well, and we just don't want to talk to you constantly. I like the look of this room a lot more. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, a Quake 3 map. There was, like, this custom map set. I feel like it was for Quake 3 Team Arena that had a very similar color scheme and, like, geometry to this. It's also got this, uh, like, iMac look to it a little bit. Maybe it's just me, though. Um, so, I guess I need to get up there, because that looks like the next obvious point. Uh, what's this thing about? Oh, okay, I can charge this up with polarity. And I suppose that means I'm going to want to bring this in here, put it on there, and what? I guess I can stand on it and launch myself, is that... Alright, I won. That was pretty easy. Moving on. So far, so good. Uh, I'm sure these uh, challenges are going to get very, very difficult. Like I said. Cassandra Shin from LifeNet Media. Can you give us a few thoughts about today? How do you feel about being the only mag runner without outside corporate funding or professional training? Do you think you're at a disadvantage? What? I have a trainer. That would be the mutant we've heard about, Gamaji. Yeah, sorry, Mission. I yeah, I have to go. I'm not. I'm not into your tone. Better check your privilege. All right, on we go. Level three, the third test chamber. I think you're probably already getting the idea of what exactly we're onto with this type of a game. Um, the first thing when you walk into these rooms is like, there's so much going on color-wise and geometry-wise. It wise, it seems a little difficult to. Uh, parse the parts of the level you actually need to concern yourself with or interact with at all. I know you're probably tired of me just looking around, though. So, some random, arbitrary shots of this facility, I suppose, as they're building it? Yeah, the modular housing system? Okay, well, that's cool, I guess. Uh, so let's figure out how we're gonna get this down. Can I, can I, like, jump and charge this thing or something? Oh, I can charge it. Uh, you don't have to keep those magnetic fields on. I was just choosing to do that. So, I'm going to assume any of these orange plates, yeah, you can charge those. Can I charge this? I can indeed. So pretty much anything orange can be charged. Uh, I guess I want to put this over here, maybe? Um, what happened? Oh, okay. Yeah, if you make them light color, they'll attract, and that'll pull this back across. Uh, and then if I just change this one, it'll drop it, so then we'll be able to put two together. And I think that's really all I needed to do. Then I probably will just stack these two up, uh, charge that, and then oop, do that, and then we're up. 
I keep thinking opposites attract, and then every time I do, it's backwards. Should be an option to, like, invert polarity or something. That would probably be helpful. Can't imagine it would be that hard to do, too. I'm sure they could really just toggle all the lights. I mean, if they have them already set so they can change color, you know, to be either red or green, red or uh, purple, then why not just be able to reverse the order they come in? Dax, did you feel like an underdog during the selection trials? Not really. They're all underdogs, Miss Shin. The training is discovery based, and I will not tolerate less than 100% commitment to the program. I'm not look, saying I'm not giving you 100%. Let's look at the tomato world again. I don't see why you keep save chances. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. So what I'm going to just guess, and I, I haven't seen ahead really, and I don't really know if this is going to be true, but I'm going to guess that the setup here right. might have something to do with that. They're training us in magnetism so we can like unlock a gate to another dimension or something. And they're just doing it in the guise of it being astronaut stuff. I bet I'm right, but I'm just guessing, so I'm not trying to spoil anything, I really don't know. So apparently this is supposed to be year 2050 is what I'm told. Seems pretty advanced for 2050. I'm gonna guess that when we get to 2050, which, you know, I might There's be alive to see, hopefully, uh, then I don't think we're gonna have big plastic chambers, but I'd put this more like 2150, maybe. <laughs> Although I'm also guessing there, as you I'm sure know. Oh, I like the area down here a lot more. This reminds me of Mirror's Edge or something. Very, uh, bright red. Alright, so what are we going to do about this? We've got another puzzle here. It looks like we've got to... Okay, we've got to break that, clearly. I'm going to guess using the same method as before, where we launch something up through it. Uh, what's this about? This pad... Oh, okay, I think I get what we're supposed to do here. Let's charge this, place it down here. Charge this, place it down there. Oh, that doesn't get it quite high enough, does it? Oh, okay. Um, what else can I do then? What if I use this thing? Does it shoot them higher or something? That doesn't seem particularly high either. Uh, uncharge that. But I'm thinking maybe launch both of them at the same time. If I set it up so, uh... Maybe I'll launch both in the air and then toggle one off the other. I don't know if I can even pull that off, but... Oop, I missed. I think I missed again. Oh. No, it doesn't seem... Oh! Okay, well, I guess that worked that time, uh, which just brings me to another block, and I'm pretty sure there isn't any fall damage, so I'm just going to drop those there. Where did the... oh, okay, in the corner here. Lovely dynamic lighting also on these. I also really like these little, like, veins of purple that are running through the wall. It's a really nice effect. I mean, it's just a shader. It's not, like, the biggest deal, but it does look cool. There's a lot of things going on. It definitely looks pretty alive, as far as this sort of thing goes. There we go. I think I read somewhere that the effect can be cumulative, so... Uh, does that open the door to the next area? No, it doesn't seem to. Oh, no, it does! Alright, so that's all I really needed to do. Not sure how many of these puzzles I intend to do on camera. I really don't like spoiling them, but so far these have been very intuitive. I haven't really even had to give them much of a second thought. Oh, I like this area. This is big and open. Yes. There's something wrong with that Zander guy. Don't listen to him. These squiggly soul things underneath there. Yeah, she's kind of a pain, huh? She's just digging for an interview to make Krukesburg look good. Hmm. Your head off. Architecture is pretty interesting here. The fact that it's also uh, flowy and organic. Uh, oh, the power went out. Part of the training? Oh, well, that's probably bad. All right. Well, I don't know what that was about. I probably should mention this was designed in Unreal Engine 3, so... Uh, it does have some of those signature marks, shader effects and such. Game definitely seems to put a big emphasis on story. 
Um, and I, I don't want to compare it too much to Portal 2, but I definitely do see some parallels there. Although I think the Portal story is a lot easier to be engaged by. Not that this is not engaging, but it's just it takes a slower uh, approach to it. And pull this sucker... Oh, I meant the other way. Down. I think probably for the entirety of the time that I end up playing this, I'm going to spend like all of that time putting the wrong one first and then fixing it. Right, I'm not sure what the relevance of that was. Yep, just like that again. Pretty sure I'm supposed to be able to walk up there, I guess. I guess we're going to see in a moment. Oh, and I should be able to do something with that. Oh, I like this little beam of light area. Whoa! Just sort of decided to make me walk to the side that time. I don't know what was up with that. Alright, come back down. I'm not sure if I even needed to be up there at all, but I'm guessing I probably needed to use that to fall down onto that platform. Something like that. I'm not sure why I started walking sideways. Yeah, I think all I need to do is just hop down to here. Is there anything else up here worth seeing? Oh, there's actually a cube, isn't there? Alright, let's proceed all the way up. That texture is very cool. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it reminds me a little bit of like that plastic sort of vellum like weird stuff that you would find on the outside of toys that have like a window box on them. Uh, like when you're a little kid and you go to the toy store and they had action figures. But uh, you know, I'm sure you couldn't probably jump on that stuff. Uh, I feel like I'm supposed to launch this cube, perhaps, using this. Oh, there's a gap in the middle here. I wonder if I can like... No, okay. I thought maybe I could get the cube stuck in between it. Uh, you sit there. Now what happens if I launch that across anything? Well, it launches across. I guess that's exactly what I wanted. Alright, let's bring this back down. Can I hurry this up, please? Now, I don't think it matters which polarity I choose for that type of thing, as long as I just do opposite of whatever they are. And we'll hop down on here. Um, what is going to charge this, though? That's the question. Can I shoot all the way over there? Doesn't seem to be. Don't suppose I can launch myself, can I? I don't think it works that way. I think I was supposed to stand on the block. And now that I've launched the block over there without me, I may have to actually restart, which is a little frustrating. But I'm sort of just figuring this out as I go, so please forgive me. Um, restart from checkpoint. I don't know where my checkpoint is. Let's hope that it was fairly recently. Be a little silly if they didn't give you a checkpoint on each level. Okay, that is what they did. Gumaji, are they off the calm? Yes. All right, so we're just going to proceed straight up there. Don't listen to him. And what did that reporter mean by cat? Yeah. She's kind of a pain, huh? She's just picking for an interview to make Grukesburg look good. Keep your head on. I feel like the characters are mostly fairly generic in this, but, you know, again, we're also very, very early yet. Alright, whatever, man. Let's, uh, let's do some block hopping or whatever it is we do. We are mag runners after all, right? Yeah! Travel like a pro. A minor power fluctuation, Mr. Grukesburg. I've ensured that it won't happen again. Um, how am I supposed to get this platform thing to come over here? Oh, can I, like, use this block to somehow... Oh, I bet I need to put it in here. Yep. And now I can charge that. I understand, I understand. Uh, but is it gonna come over here unless... Oh, it is. Thought maybe I'd have to go over there and, like, charge it up again or something. That was actually easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, problem is, though, I need to be on it, because I don't believe there's anything here that's gonna let me jump up. So I guess we'll have to send that back over, unfortunately. Uh, if I could run across, that would make this a little nicer. The mag gun thing is kind of a cool design, by the way. I don't think I've spoken at all about that. It reminds me a little bit of something that you might see in Bioshock. It's definitely like a, like, Novo Future 
steampunk feel to this, if that's even a thing. It might not be. Uh, it just feels like the right thing to say for some reason. Alright, down. Thank you. I really can't wrap my head around. Same things pulling toward each other for whatever reason. Uh, so down I go on top of this platform. And across we go towards victory. And I guess we will wrap up this short little impressions video from this. Uh, so far, impressions are fairly positive. I do like the occasional first-person puzzle game with a little bit of a platforming element thrown in. Uh, seems like it could have a nice setup for some fairly intelligent puzzles. Uh, it's hard to say until you get super far into it. I think there's something like 40-ish levels to it, so it's not supposed to be the shortest experience. Uh, and I do know for a fact that when things go off the rails, the, uh, the intrigue level gets a little bit more interesting. I've just seen a few uh, snippets of things later on. So, granted, I don't know how things turn out story-wise. I'm gonna hope they get more interesting, because so far it's a little bland, but, you know, the premise, the idea behind it seems cool enough, and, you know, I, I like the concept of magnetism. I think there's a lot of options and versatility for that. What? Gamaji, did you hack into the testing Gamaji, are you hacking into testing facilities? What are you doing, man? You're drunk with power. I just want to do more, more puzzles. Can you let me out, please? You're gonna get me kicked out. You got your hologram keyboard, man. I just want to leave. He thinks I'm just another peripheral. Uh, oh, no. No, he's blocked No, me. no, he's blocked me. <sighs> anyway. Can you hack through this door, please? Alright. Very nice. Let's get a, a lay of the land after this next loading screen. Ah, oh, we got lime green room. I guess we're doing a thematic More approach. Points. This would be a bad time for the power to go out again. Yeah. More platforms. Alright, so we've got a, a nice swooping lime green Adidas stripe pattern <laughs> going on on the floor here. Uh, we've got a block up there at the top, some dots which may or may not light up. Uh, it's, the, it's mirroring... Oh no, it's not. It's a totally separate symbol. That little thingy up there. I don't know. I don't even think I'm going to start to approach solving this one, but... I think I'll give this one a, a tentative recommendation. It seems like it has enough potential that I could see myself playing this a bit more. Uh, granted, I mean, you have to be into this sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, the few negatives that I've mentioned, uh, I don't think that they would get in the way significantly with your enjoyment of solving these puzzles, which is, I think, obviously the core of what we're getting at here. Uh, and obviously, once things get a little bit onto the macabre side, uh, that is going to sort of outweigh any of the blandness that we might have seen at the beginning. And I know that is completely subjective. Uh, probably most of you guys think it, I don't know, it could be varying levels of neatness to you guys, so... I don't know what I'm supposed to uh, speak on on that behalf. Anyway, uh, I guess we will wrap up our episode on Magrunner Dark Pulse, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, of course, I will include, as I always do, the uh, links for purchase of this one if you want to check it out. It is out on Steam right now. Uh, don't know the price off the top of my head. I'm going to guess it's probably either 10 or $15. A value proposition seems worth it. I'm going to guess it's uh, at least four hours to finish, but that's sort of a, like I said, a guess. Uh, I, I have a feeling it's probably a little longer than that even. And, and of course, with any puzzle game, that also varies depending on your ability to solve the puzzles and how fast you can do it. Uh, this is obviously one of those games where like you don't want to really watch too much of it anyway. So it's probably a bad idea for me to get too far ahead, because if I start solving all the puzzles, there's not going to be anything left for you guys to do. Uh, again, probably a reason not to watch a Let's Play of this one. Also, very nice lens flares. They're very subtle, but they look lovely. Uh, except for when they kind of glitch with the door, but, you know, separate issue there. Uh, so that is going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember, if you'd like to check out some more episodes in this series, head on over to my website, which is indie-impressions.com, so you can stay up on all the new stuff that's getting uh, uploaded on a daily basis. Got over 400 episodes. They're all neatly categorized and sorted for your perusal. Uh, you can check them out by platform, uh, by genre, or even if you have a special uh, you know, dev in mind, feel free to type them in the search box, and that should come up. Uh, aside from my indie-impressions.com website. I've also got facebook.com slash indieimpressions. If you'd like to get every day's new video delivered right into your Facebook stream, quickest way to do that, leave a like over there. Helps me out, just takes a second. And it's also a good place to conversate if you'd like to start a discussion about something. Uh, I also do uh, occasional contests, news updates, and I also let you know generally when I'm streaming, uh, if that is something that you're interested in. I wonder if I could get this to flip over. No, it looks like it might be too far away. Anyway, I guess that's besides the point. 
wonder how you're actually supposed to approach this puzzle. I'm not really sure. I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually, though. Uh, aside from that, though, I've also got my Twitter handle, which is at RockleySmile, so if you'd like to send me a quick message, quickest way to do that is obviously hit me up over there. I also uh, take suggestions for games. If you're an indie dev and you'd like to uh, get in contact with me about the possibility of checking out your game on the show, feel free to either send me a tweet or if you want to send me a message, a uh, private PM over on YouTube or Reddit or Facebook or pretty much anything is fine with me. Uh, I will also take uh, uh, email if you want to send me an email via my contact form on indie-impressions.com. That is fine as well. Alright, but that is going to pretty much do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be sure to check out the description for all my social media links and the purchase link, which will be right in the description as well. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope you will stop back again tomorrow for another awesome indie game. So have a lovely night, guys, and I will see you then.